It was like a bomb exploding in Albany. For the first time ever, the Senate Judiciary Committee refused to confirm a governor's nominee to head the state's highest court. We explored the decision, the repercussions, and whether this signals a new balance of power in the state capitol. The point starts right now. The state is still reeling from Governor Hochul's loss to install Hector LaSalle as the first Latino to head the state court of appeals. Is the fight over, or is this just round one? Bronx Senator Luis Opilfero was one of his staunchest supporters. You still believe that he should have a chance to get a, a vote, or that he should be on the state court of appeals? Should Governor Hochul pursue a court battle to, to force a floor vote? You know, it's a difficult question for me personally because I am a member of the Senate and I work with my, uh, with my conference every day. Um, also, this would create a constitutional uh, crisis in the state of New York. On the other hand, um, here is a person that I thought uh, was treated uh, by the social media unfairly. Uh, there was a character assassination. Uh, there was multiple misrepresentation of some of the cases. And even within the cases, there was more cherry picking. Um, and so I believe that it was unfair the way he was treated. Uh, people are saying that the governor is weak. I don't agree with it. I think if she stays with the candidate all the way, it shows that actually she's a person of strength. Um, she feels like this candidate was treated unfairly, and uh, it's so, almost like she has. She, she may have to go. What advice would you give her? Would you say sue or pick another candidate? I, one advice I will not tell her is to pick another candidate because I believe that this candidate okay. uh, was more than qualified. So if she were to decide, to decide to sue, what would be the political repercussions? Can she cobble up enough votes if she wins to get Hector LaSalle appointed to the court? Let's do the math. There are 42 Democrats and 21 Republicans. So if she gets all the Republicans, she needs 11 Democrats in order to get him approved and sent to the Court of Appeals. Are there 11 Democrats besides yourself who would vote for him? Well, it's less than 11, um, even people who have announced support, because uh, there you have uh, uh, Kevin Thomas from Long Island, Monica Martinez from Long Island, and Jamal Bailey, the chair of the Democratic Party of the Bronx. So we're now down to six or seven. About six or seven, that's correct. Um, so? Uh, so I don't know what the governor has done, what counting they've done, uh, but certainly it would be less uh, than, than the 11 because I know that some people have already openly supported the, uh, the candidate. Uh, but So we're talking heavy duty arm twisting for six or seven votes or do you think that there are people who have a more moderate view that would want to support him? Look, Marsha, I can't profess to speak for my colleagues uh, and uh, I can't profess to speak for the governor's office or my leader. Uh, what I'm saying is that uh, Look, we have all these numbers and counting and so forth, but we have to look at the big picture as well. I believe that this is going to punch a major hole in the Democratic Party ability to recruit Latinos in the future. I think this is going to be a major mess for the state party. Uh, there, there's a segment of our society that opposes him uh, because I believe that the, they feel like they've made mistakes with prior judges. And that's unfortunate because now they want this particular candidate who is the most qualified, or every single committee that he went through, every single bar association, every single legal mind that I certainly respect have said that this gentleman is more than qualified and has everything that it takes to be the, the uh, chief judge. But here's the question. If she does win and she does get him appointed to the Court of Appeals, does this poke a hole in the eye of the progressives in the Democratic Party in the Senate who might want to seek revenge as she negotiates her budget and her many priorities in the coming weeks and months? I mean, uh, politics is a tough sport. Um, they may want to seek revenge. Uh, we don't know what the governor may do uh, with respect to that, uh, but I would hope that it doesn't come to that. Uh, right now, if in fact the judge were to ascend, I would hope that we would all come together and certainly there's going to be some level of healing that's going to take place. Uh, again, I've, I've gotten m hundreds of calls and social media and, and uh, emails of prominent Latino leaders in the state, uh, business leaders in the state, m attorneys in this state, judges in the state that have told me how angry they are 
at the way he was treated during that hearing and the fact that uh, they didn't let it go to a full body. So if she does fall on her sword and nominate somebody else, um, do you think that some that she will find another way to exact revenge? I hate to, it's not a good <laughs> word, but you know, like for example, you know, she's got a budget. She's got a supreme power in putting what's in the budget. There are court decisions that say she can decide what goes in the budget. That's correct. Can some of these programs that are near and dear to certain lawmakers suddenly find themselves on the shelf? I mean, look, it, it's part of, of the process. The governor is, uh, of New York State is the most um, uh, powerful executive in the entire country. Uh, she has the ability to exact certain things that she wants. Uh, whether, she, whether she will use it as some sort of form of revenge, um, I doubt it. I've dealt with, uh, with the governor before. Um, whether she has to, I don't know. But uh, uh, that's she the way... She has to assert her power as governor, otherwise it looks like she's a weak governor. That's, that's part of the other consideration. You're absolutely right. So, you know, one of the main arguments of the progressives is that the Court of Appeals needs to be the liberal counterpoint to the U.S. Supreme Court, which has taken a very conservative bent. Your thoughts on that? Look, I, I am a progressive. Regardless of what you've seen on social media lately, I am a progressive. I was the I author of the Green Light Bill, criminal justice reform. So do you subscribe to that theory that was advanced at the hearing that you need somebody, you need a court that leans to the left to protect the rights that are under fire from the U.S. Supreme Court? There's a system in place to select a judge. Uh, never in the history of a selection process has a, has a candidate been to subjected to this scrutiny. Four and a half hours of hearings where he established everything that they were against. He proved that they were incorrect. The question becomes whether if I would accept if he ran, if the governor follows through with it, was that the question that you wanted me to answer? Yeah. Look, I, I can't really answer that right now. I just know that uh, a lot has to be done because I, I speak from my personal experience, Marsha. I was an attorney for 31 years, and when I first stepped foot in the courthouse, I asked, why aren't there more judges here? And, there were, and the question was, well, we don't have those that are qualified. And here we have someone who's eminently qualified who has been treated this way. So one of the objections expressed by the committee was that Judge LaSalle had accepted the cross endorsement of the conservative party when he ran for a judgeship. Were you concerned about that? Do you think that politics should play a role in the selection of judges? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, um, and even if it did, this judge is not this crazy conservative that he's being described as. He's a, he's a, he's a person that follows the rule of law um, as he has to and precedence as we have to. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know what the, what the alternative is and what they want, but certainly there's no reason why this judge is not the chief judge today. So several members of the legal community have suggested that um, including the Bar Association, that New York should change the way we select judges. Do you agree with that? Look, we changed it in the 70s because we said it was too political back then, the whole process was changed. Uh, this is a, a process that's the least political, if you ask me. Uh, remember that the people that are on the committee that select the seven judges are selected by the governor, the speaker, the majority leader. Um, but essentially, the reason why we changed it in the past was because it was too political, and now we have a system that apparently worked up until Judge LaSalle, the first person of color, uh, to be uh, nominated to this position. Uh, a yet, lot of things have changed but, uh, since he yet, was nominated. But yet, when you watched this hearing, all five hours of it, which you sat through and I watched, mm -hmm. uh, politics was front and center. You know, it didn't take politics out of the, out of the equation at all. Well, which is, but, but unfortunately, uh, I think if we go to the prior system, it would be worse. It'd be more political. And, and the reality is, is that as the, the eminent Judge uh, Littman indicated earlier today, he said that we should have no politics involved in the court process uh, because, uh, you know, if there's any uh, branch of government that should be the most independent, it should be the judiciary. Senator, thank you for joining me. We'll be right back with more on Governor Hochul's first big loss at the hands of members of her own party.